Okay, so this video is how to develop a torso sloper. Um, we're gonna be using some math. I'll post the math on Canvas. I've got my equations written right here just so I don't get lost. And I'll talk about the math as I go, uh, hopefully with some real life information. But I am going to be working in half scale, so things are gonna look a little different than yours just so it'll all fit on camera. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a rectangular box which outlines a half quadrant, a half portion of the body. So from the center front across the right side or left side, whichever one you decide they're the same, to the center back. So we're going to be doing half of the body. So we need to determine our first line which is A to D and this is going to be your chest or bust circumference, full bust circumference divided by two, and then you're gonna add two inches for ease. Then you'll just take your ruler and you'll just draw that line. And this side is A and this side is D. The next line you're going to do is we're going to do the full length of the body all the way down to the hip. So we are going to take your height in inches and divide that by four and then add three eighths of an inch. Now just write that number down somewhere because that's the first half of the equation. The second half of the equation is you're going to take your height in inches again and you're going to divide that by 8. That's the second half of your equation. Then you're going to add those two numbers together. That is going to give you D to C, which is going to be down the side. So then you would just draw that line. Okay, down here is C. Now we've got a nice L. You are just gonna complete the box. So from A to B, you're gonna draw down the same length as D to C. And from C to B, it's gonna be the same length as A to D. So you're just gonna complete this rectangle. And then label your points. Like I said, over here is B, over here is C, this is D, this is A. Now, if we're looking at the body, this is the center back of the body. So AB is the center back and CD is the center front. I'm gonna label those so I don't get confused, but I'm gonna label slightly outside of my line just so I don't, um, so it doesn't get in the way. I will still need to put seam allowances on this at some point. So they'll still be within my pattern piece, just not within my working space. Okay, so I know this is the center front. I know this is the center back. I know this is gonna be my hip line because I told you it was gonna, we were gonna do a torso sloper all the way to the hip line. And this is gonna be up around the shoulder. I'm not gonna label anything up here yet because we're still not finished doing what we need to do up there. So once we have our rectangle done, now we need to figure out where our chest line is going to be. So starting from A, working down towards B, we're gonna put in a new point somewhere on the chest line and that's gonna be E. And the equation for that is your chest or full bust circumference divided by four and then you're going to plus or minus zero to three um, quarters of an inch based on the arm's eye depth chart which is in your worksheet so the worksheet i gave you for women it is the armhole depth worksheet right here on page two or for men it is the arms eye depth adjustment worksheet down here on the bottom. So if your chest circumference is less than 36, you would add three quarters of an inch. If it is greater than 44, then you would minus half an inch. That's how that plus or minus is gonna go. So once your math is all done, you're gonna put that point in right over here on the AB line. This, line, this point is gonna be E. And you're going to draw that line perpendicular to AB and have it extend all the way across. This is now your chest line. 
or your bust line. Now, if you wanna double check your math, you can take a measurement from the center of your shoulder to the center of um, chest line or bust line, wherever you took that, and you can just double check that math measurement from here to here to make sure that you're in the ballpark. If you're more than an inch off, then you need to put that chest line where your chest measurement is because we're working, drafting, we're working with proportionate theory and it, you may not be proportionate, just, you know. So double check your math, make sure that your math is actually where it needs to be. And if not, adjust the line to your physical reality. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna put in a waistline. Once again, we're gonna be starting from A. We're gonna be working down to point B. We're gonna put a line in here in the middle, which is F. And that is going to be our height in inches divided by four. And then we are going to add three eighths of an inch. So I would start from A. I would come down to where that is going to be. And that puts my point right here. Once again, I am going to draw that perpendicularly to AB all the way across my entire rectangle box. And I'm gonna label my points. This point is now F. This point is now um, H. This point up here on the chest line is point G. So now we have the body kind of segmented out. This is gonna be my waist. So now you should have a center front, a center back, a chest or a bust line, a waistline, and a hip line. That's how the body is going to go. Now you can double check your math and just see if from F to B is your height in inches divided by 8. Um, that's just an interesting fact to know. doesn't really matter other than if you're working with proportionate theory, this should be an eighth of your height or the same distance as from the crown of your head to your chin. Mine isn't, but I'm not proportionate. So, you know, whatever. It all works. Okay, so now we're going to start working up here. And we're going to be developing the arm's eye. So I am going to zoom in and change my camera angle just a little. So you can see that just a little bit better. Okay, so we are going to work from E and we're going to work into the body, remembering that this is the center back. We are going to take our chest circumference or full bust circumference and divide it by six. And then we are going to add an inch and a half to inch and three quarters based on comfort. Now, this comfort is it just allows full rotation of motion in your shoulder because this is in the back where your lat muscles are. So if you do some kind of an activity that really develops your back lap muscles, I would do closer to the inch and three quarters. Otherwise, the inch and a half is fine. Generally for females, the inch and a half is plenty. So that would put my point right here. This point becomes I. And we are just gonna square that up to the top line. And up here becomes J. Now, whatever this distance is right here, we're going to use the same distance on this side, except for we're going to subtract half an inch from that. So if this side is six inches, this side would be five and a half inches. Once again, just to allow full rotation of motion in your arm's eye in the back for your shoulder, you don't need that much motion in the front generally. So that's why we're going to subtract it from the front. And I'm going to draw that straight up to my top a D line and this point becomes K and this point up here becomes L. So now we have the body or the slober segmented out where it needs to be. Now we're just going to start drawing our shoulder, our shoulder seam, our neck lines, and our arms eye is going to happen right here in the middle. Uh, we're going to put a side seam in right down here in the center. That's what we're going to do next. We are going to find the center distance between I and K. Find the midpoint. My midpoint is right here. 
But then because we need that little bit more motion in the back than in the front, we're actually going to shift the midpoint a quarter of an inch towards the front. So even though right here is my midpoint, mathematically, I'm shifting it to the front right here. I am going to draw that line all the way down to my hip line. Oh, I'm going to actually have my pen register that I drew it. This becomes M. This becomes N. And this becomes O down here at the bottom. Now the bottom two thirds of the body is done. All we have left are the shoulders and the arms eyes up here at the top. So starting in the center back, that's where we're going to start. We are going to draw a line across from A between A and J, but we are going to develop the neck. So I, you need to take your chest or your full bust measurement and divide that by 12 and then add a quarter of an inch. Write that number down. You're gonna need that number again in the front and again for something else. So just make sure that you know that. Um, mine is gonna be um, right here. And that is gonna become a prime or we call it in that lab a junior just because it's funnier. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with math, but it makes it funnier. So I need to know what that distance is. And then I need to know what a third of that distance is. And a third of that distance, we are going to come up above the shoulder line and put it up here outside of our rectangle. This becomes B junior. Now, with a pencil, something that's not a real line, I just kind of need to know what those thirds look like for proportion, just as I'm getting ready to draw this curve in. They're not a real measurement, so you don't have to draw them really heavy. But starting at B Junior, you're going to make a sharp curve down to almost the first third, and then continue, but by the time you're halfway between the first and the second third, you should be back on the line and stay on the line for the rest. So it is going to look somewhat like this. Okay, you can see that from B to the first third, I'm making a sharp curve, but I'm still not quite touching this line when I get to that first third. It's about halfway in there that I'm touching the line and I continue it all the way out there. That is our back neck length. We are gonna put in our shoulder seam, and I have to look at a number really quick, so sorry. So we're going to start at J and we're just going to drop a point five eighths of an inch down from J. <clears throat> Except for I did five eighths of an inch and I forgot that I'm doing um, half scale. So I'm actually right here. And this becomes C junior. Now, whatever your shoulder seam length is, we're going to start at B. You must go through C and then extend out however long your shoulder seam length is. So it's just going to look like this. And this becomes D junior. Now we're going to find the midpoint between C and I. So that puts my midpoint right here. This becomes F junior. We're going to take a quarter of the distance between A and E. So... 
I'm just going to put some tick marks from where my quarter is so that I know what that looks like. So I know what those quarters are. And coming in here on the bottom quarter, if I were to come straight across on the bottom quarter and put it on this line and then extend that point out into the body a quarter of an inch, this becomes G Junior. Now we're going to find out what the distance between I and M is. You're going to take half of that distance and you're going to put that at a 45 degree angle. And that becomes I junior. Just kidding. It becomes H junior. Pretty close. Whatever. So now you've got C as the on your line, which was used in your shoulder, but we have D junior, which is the point of your shoulder. We have F junior, which is right here on the intersection line. We have G junior, which is just a quarter of an inch outside of the line. We have H junior, which is half of the distance from I to M, but at a 45 degree angle out from I. Now using your curved ruler, a design curve, or you can freehand it if you're feeling really confident, you're gonna draw a curved line that starts at D, hits F, hits, hits F Junior, hits G Junior, hits H Junior, and hits M. It must hit all of those things. Okay, and you've just drawn the first half of your arm's eye intersection. And now you can see from this piece over here, our back sloper is complete. We are now going to work on the front sloper. Now, remember this distance from A to A junior that I told you to write down that you were gonna need again? We're gonna need that same distance over here On D, we're going to start over here, <clears throat> but we're going to subtract, we're going to, sorry, we're going to add a quarter of an inch to it. So whatever this distance is, we're going to add an, a quarter of an inch to it over here. We're going to put it right along the line between D and L. And then we're going to take that distance again and come down between D and G, except for this time we're going to subtract an eighth of an inch. I just have to make sure that I'm actually subtracting and not adding. So this one up here becomes K junior. This one right here becomes I junior. And we are going to square out the box between these two. Now, this is not a real line. This is just so we can get the neckline. So I usually draw a little lighter of a line because really what I need to know is where this point is, where J Jr. is. And I need to know where this line is between K Jr. and I Jr. So draw a diagonal line right there through the box. Then we need to find the midpoint of this box. on the line, then we're going to drop into the box. Uh, just like a, 
an eighth of an inch, so not very much, but just slightly off the line. And we are going to just draw a slightly curved line, making sure that we can hit this lower point. Starting from K Junior, coming to I Junior, we're just going to draw a slightly curved line. And that's going to give us our neck opening. Now, from K Junior, we're going to extend out and to get our shoulder seam here. So we need to draw a guide point down this L to K line. And this is going to be uh, an inch and a half down from L. This becomes N Junior. We're going to take whatever our shoulder seam was on the back, and we're going to do that same distance starting from K Junior. Must go through N Junior, but it must still be the same distance as the other one because these two get sewn together at the shoulder, and so they must be the same length. Now you can see on the back, we went up above the line. On the front, we are staying below the line. And that's just because our sloper comes up higher in the back and lower in the front for comfort. So this is not going to be on the same height level. And that is totally normal. Now we are going to find the distance between N Junior and K. And we're going to cut it in thirds. So, I, so about a third, about a third, totally didn't do that math right, so. That's a third and that's a third. On the second third, this is gonna be P Junior. So this third we're not worried about. Whatever our distance was here between I and H Junior, we're gonna do the same um, 45 degree angle over here between off of K and this becomes Q Junior. And now you're going to draw your curved line up here. This is O Junior. Sorry about that. You're going to draw your curved line from O Junior to P to Q to M. Okay. Now, if you've done it correctly, the front will be a bit sharper than the back. That is pretty normal. What we don't want is we don't want these to come way out here and then return really sharp so that they look like a duck bill. That's going to make your shoulder seam really strange and fitting and we'll have to cut off quite a bit of fabric. So if you're looking like you have really big duck bills here, we might want to double check your math. The only other thing we're going to do is down here at the bottom on C, we're going to drop the front and add a little bit of curvature just down here at the bottom. And we're going to come from O and we're just going to draw a slightly curved line that comes and hits C and returns. And that's just because we need a little more fall in the front generally than we do at the back. And at that point, your torso slopers are complete. All you would need to do is take this side, separate the two pieces, seam allowance this side, seam allowance this side, and you would be ready to sew them up and try for fit.